Welcome to Naresai Technologies. This is Ram Chandar. In the last two videos, I did given information related to exception handling. So, we have four types of problems. One is compulsive error, another one is runtime error, and third one is runtime exception, and fourth one is compulsive exception. In the last two videos, I did discuss only first three. I did not discuss about the compile time exception that we will see separately in coming videos. Especially in this video, I am highlighting the concept like what is exception handling? What is exception handling? Very simple. What is this? It is a mechanism or it is one process. It is one mechanism or process. For what? It is a mechanism or process for avoiding runtime errors and runtime exceptions, which are given by the JVM and execute the program and execute the program without any abnormal termination without any abnormal termination is called exception handling. What is this? It is a process or mechanism of avoiding runtime errors or run and runtime exceptions which are given by the JVM at what time? At runtime and execute the program without any abnormal termination is called exception handling. So, what is the uh, meaning? What is the meaning of this definition? Very simple. First, let me concentrate on these two terminals. Already we discussed in the last two videos, but let me give a quick review on top of this point. Runtime exception. I am taking notepad. In the notepad, in the notepad, I am taking one class like a test. Here, I am writing like public static void main, public static void main. Now, here I am writing like a string array s. Yes. Now, I have a small program. What is that? A few output statement, debugging statement, system dot out dot println main method main method scope or main method scope started starting next one and here i'm writing like main method scope ending now observe here let me save this file test.java i'm saving this file on top of the desktop now all files and save it let me open command prompt and go to desktop and type java c test dot java. Now, java test. Then what happened? Successfully main method scope starting as well as what here? Ending. There is no problem. But what is exception handling? Whenever runtime exception is rises int a equal to 10 by 0, then what happened? java c test dot java and java test. See basically whenever exception is rises then automatically what happen here? See main method scope is starting after that suddenly the program is stopping. I want to avoid that stopping process. I want to print all the SOP statement. This statement I want to print and this statement also I want to print. That is our exception handling telling. It is a process or avoiding Runtime exception, runtime exception which are given by whom? JVM. At what time? Runtime and execute the program without any abnormal termination. So, based on programmer thinking, based on programmer, th programmer thoughts only, we need to stop the program, not by JVM behavior itself. So, JVM taking one decision. JVM is finding one logical problem 
that is why JVM stop our program, it will not executing the remaining statement. But our intention is according to programmer interest, we need to stop the program. So, that is what exactly we can call it as avoiding abnormal termination with the user interest, with the programmer interest only we need to stop the program. Then we need to go for what here exception handling. Now, yesterday in the means, in the last class, we did talk about runtime errors. Now, here I am writing like object creation test t equal to new test, test t equal to new test. Now, here I am writing like one uh, test t equal to new test, if you are creating an object test t1 equal to new test, let me compile and execute the program. Java C test dot Java and Java test, then what happen? We are getting one runtime error, we are getting one runtime error, observe keep on loop is repeating, keep on loop is repeating, repeating, repeating understand. So, this is comes under what your stack overflow error, I need to avoid this problem, I need to avoid this problem, see the definition, if the errors are coming at runtime, like runtime errors and runtime exception which are given by the JVM, whenever errors and exceptions are coming at runtime, definitely JVM will stop our programming without providing any information to the programmer. So, with the programmer interest, our program is not stopped, with the JVM interest only our program is going to terminate, I want to avoid that process, then we should go for concept like exception handling. What is exception handling? It is a process or mechanism to avoiding runtime errors and exceptions which are given by the JVM at runtime and executing the program without any abnormal termination is called exception handling. Now, observe next one, why should we go for exception handling? So, before going to talk about this concept, first understand what type of problems are you going to face in abnormal termination? The first one is observe carefully. Now, I have a bulk of statements system dot out dot println, system dot out dot println, here I am writing like this is, here I am writing like before exception, before exception. After that, after that, I am copy this code or that line and paste here. Now, what I am writing here after exception, after exception, yes. Now, let me compile the program Java C and what is that test dot Java successfully compiled. Now, now let me first give the clarity related to runtime exception. Now, here I am writing like system dot out dot println, here I am writing like ram caret of 0, ram caret of 0. Now, let me compile this program, ok, successfully compile and execute the program. What happened? Main method scope is starting before exception and we are printing some value r and after that after exception and main method scope is ending. So, our required output statements everything is printed on the very console. How many output statements? 5 output statements and here out, how many output uh, printing on the console? like 5 outputs. So, valid program execution. Now, let me copy this one and paste here. Now, let me write 1 here and let me write 3 here and let me compile. So, we are expecting 6 uh, SOP statements, but what happened observe here? How many exceptions, how many SOP statements, how many debugging statements are printed on the console? Only 3 one is main method scope is starting before exception and R. After that, what happened? Whatever the statements which we have after the exception, 
whatever the statements which we have after the exception those statements are not executing those statements are what here not executing then i want to avoid this process so sometimes i want to execute the statements like uh, file closing connections database closing connections so these type of statements i want to execute at the real world so if the exception basically those closing statements always writing end of the program but whenever exception is rises in the middle what about the end of the lines program here not executed so we need to execute some necessary statements which are executable we need to execute the some statements which are necessary to execute which is which are mandatory to execute then we should go for what here exception handling so here there are two approaches to there are two reasons to go for exception handling reason one whenever exception is rises in our rises in our program rises in our program the statements the statements which are the statements which are existing after that existing after that exception statement statement those are not executing what is the first one whenever exception is rises in our program the statements which are existing after that exception statement those are not executing then what what is the important point here what is the point we need to write here one is we need to we need to execute the statements statements which are mandatory for execute which are mandatory for execution so then we then we should go for what here exception handling when our exception is rises like here here we have a exception what about the remaining statement the statements which are existing after that exception those are not executing those are not executing then what we need to do note we need to execute the statements which are mandatory mandatory for execution then we should go for what here exception handling very good what is the second approach what is the second reason why should we go for exception handling now observe guys now let me execute this program what happened it will giving one uh, exception message it will giving one exception message string index out of bound exception so how many members can able to understand this exception the people who knows uh, java language the person who don't know java language this exception message is not understand by the end user for example once you going to in atm machine for withdraw the money first we need to swipe the card later it will asking like enter your pin number after entering the pin number it will asking like uh, press the button here after button clicking on button here it will asking like what type of transaction do you required so once we selecting on withdrawal button assume my account having 3000 rupees i'm unfortunately with forgetness i'm en entering like 4000 rupees then if atm machine telling like java dot lang dot illegal argument exception if atm machine telling like java dot lang dot illegal argument exception then how many members can able to understand that details nobody the person who knows java only understand that uh, exception messages basically atm application is not for designing the people who knows java atm application is designed for all the people who's living in the world so whatever the atm application giving messages those messages must and should be understood by the all the end users but whatever the exception messages are given by the jvm those are not user friendly messages those are very much strict with what your java related messages so if you want to provide user friendly messages then we should go for the concept like what your exception handling what is the second point whenever exception rises whenever exception is rises jvm by default provides 
provide some exception message message which is related to java terminology those terminologies not understand by the not understand by the normal end user normal end user so simply we can say messages are not user friendly messages are not user friendly then i need to provide one uh, uh, note here that is why should we go for exception handling if we want to provide provides user friendly exception messages if you want to provide user friendly exception messages to end user we should go for we should go for exception handling this is what actual point the question is why should we go for exception handling so what i am um, let me give you a quick review whenever exception is raises remaining statements are not going to execute if you want to execute those statements which are necessary execute or mandatory to execute we should go for exception handling whenever exception is raises jvm is not providing any user friendly messages if you want to provide the user friendly messages we should prefer the concept like what here exception handling i hope you enjoy this video for more videos please subscribe naresh it channel thank you